universities have been getting absolutely ravished by cyber attacks over the past couple of years, specifically ransomware attacks, whose frequencies have doubled between 2019, 2020, and the trend appears to continue into 2021. And these ransomware attacks, they can get pretty expensive. The average cost to remediate them in 2020 was about $500,000, which is enough to put 10 different students through college and get advanced degrees or buy a lot of equipment for the school football team. And the whole reason for this becoming so frequent, or at least one of the reasons that you probably guessed, is that schooling has pretty much become a completely online thing. Many universities, they still don't even have any real staff that's physically present at them. So it's not even like students or professors can actually really get in contact with IT about a problem, or at least they can't physically show them something that's going on on their computers. Essentially, if your issue is not something that can be solved over the phone or by email, and after many years of doing over the phone and email tech support, I can tell you it's not very productive. Um, but yeah, if you can't solve it that way, it's probably something that you're going to have to solve yourself. People are put in a position where they are responsible for managing their own technology when they probably haven't really done that before, or at least not on a smartphone. You know, many people these days don't even have computers at home. They just have a smartphone, especially if we're talking about Zoomers, the people that are actually attending college these days. Uh, but now they have a laptop and they have to be their own admins. And at the same time, they are much more dependent on their technology since they can't actually physically attend lectures. So this means that the attack surface for hackers is greater than it's ever been before. Students and professors are using remote learning applications that they aren't really familiar with. Nobody was really that familiar with them a couple of years ago. Uh, and some of them have their own vulnerabilities that even if they're configured correctly, it's still going to be vulnerable. In fact, one in three of the data breach events that has occurred in the last two years were directly related to this. But there's even more that contributes to universities being the perfect targets for mass ransomware attacks. One of them is poor authentication. Now, this is pretty much an issue everywhere because it's impossible to force users to really set up good passwords. There's always going to be that one person that makes their password password or one, two, three, four, five, six, like you see in this graphic here. Uh, and even if you try to add extra requirements, like you tell them, oh, you got to have an uppercase and numbers and symbols and it's got to be a certain length. They're just going to end up making their password password one with a capital P and an exclamation point at the end. Uh, and what makes this even worse is the fact that universities are requiring you to have so many different accounts for so many different things, all these different services. You might have six different teachers that all use a different remote learning tool that you're going to need to have an account for. Uh, you might have something like a Dropbox account or a Google Drive, and then of course you have your university's email and there might be some other student portal stuff that you need. Uh, so naturally, students are going to end up using the same password again and again for all of these different services. I mean, they're using the same username or at least the same email for all of it. And by the way, if you're doing this, you're reusing passwords instead of using a password manager, then the password that you're reusing probably sucks in the first place. But even if you're reusing a really good password, like the kind that a random password generator would create for you, it's only going to be as good as the most vulnerable app amongst all of the ones that you're using. Because let's say one of them has a vulnerability that allows for capturing your credentials in plain text, or maybe it's sending them in an encrypted way, but the encryption is not very good. It can be easily broken or brute forced. All of your accounts are gonna be compromised once a hacker gets that one password. And then of course, there's the usual nonsense that universities and corporations have been doing for years, which is that you take unexperienced computer users, you give them no real formal security training of any kind, and then you let them loose on one of the most insecure and buggy operating systems that are available, i.e. Windows 10. Uh, and it's no wonder that the majority of universities that lack basic OPSEC, like secure email configurations, 
Uh, they get things like database ports that aren't secure. They'll have SSH and RDP ports being open on devices that don't actually need them to be open. It's already bad enough that these publicly funded schools are spending my tax money on Windows 10 licenses. The least that they could do is add some basic security to that dumpster fire of an OS that they're making all of their students and faculty use. These ransomware attacks could end up spelling the end for universities as we know them. They've already been struggling financially very much during this pandemic due to so many people dropping out of college or wanting refunds, which is understandable because if you paid for a formal university education, if you paid that kind of money, which is tens of thousands of dollars in most cases, just to get an online school experience, you're probably going to be pretty pissed off because you could have just straight up paid for an online school uh, or just study stuff on your own. That doesn't cost any money. But if you go the online only school route, it's usually many times cheaper. Uh, but then there's also the fact that some universities were really making their money from college sports, which isn't really a thing during the pandemic. I mean, just to give you some insight into how profitable college sports are, we're just gonna take college football. So we're not even counting like basketball, hockey, or anything else like that. Just college football alone generated about $1 billion in profit over three years just for the top 20 football schools in the country. Let that sink in for a moment so that you can really get a perspective for just how much money these schools make from their college sports. And remember, college athletes don't get paid. So it's basically like having a mini NFL just minus all of the expensive contracts. Like, you know, imagine having a Tom Brady and a Patriots team, except the only person you actually have to pay is Coach Belichick. Everybody else just works for free, uh, or at least works for an education. Now, honestly, I'm not really too concerned about the possibility of universities crashing and burning, them no longer being taken seriously as an institution or recommended to every single person that graduates high school. I've thought for a long time that they're overpriced and inefficient and an outdated model for educating people. Uh, I think that colleges have been catering to the lowest common denominator more and more over the years. And instead of preparing young adults for life, I get the feeling that it really does the opposite of that. Like, I think you would typically be more well adjusted to the real world and understand how things actually work as an adult if you just got a job after high school and then spent your time getting some work experience, you know, learning valuable things like how to deal with people, networking, and studying to do a profession like IT. You know, with IT, for example, you can get into that field with certifications pretty easily. There's such a high demand that you really don't actually need a degree. Or if you wanted to become something like a certified plumber, electrician, or HVAC worker, they make pretty good money. They're making better money than a lot of people that are graduating with bachelor's and master's degrees. Um, they're usually pretty easy fields to get into as far as studying and stuff goes while working part time. And then, of course, there's online resources, which is pretty much what you're getting anyway with schools these days, except that they charge you a lot more in order for you to talk to, you know, some professor that's official instead of just basically weeding people out on your own or watching the experts that give away their knowledge for free. You know, if you're smart and somewhat disciplined, it's pretty easy to make it in life without college. Uh, but let's, you know, let's say that we actually do want to fix this crap. How is it going to get fixed? Well, really, universities should consider a major overhaul of their cybersecurity. Uh, tighten up on the remote learning apps to, you know, try to get all the professors to at least use the same thing so that there's not as much application sprawl because that's one of the easiest ways to end up with vulnerabilities into your system, just having a bunch of apps and having to keep up with them and manage them, which again, IT isn't really doing. You're relying on each individual student and professor to do this. Uh, start enabling two-factor authentication for people's accounts. 
Uh, honestly, I think that most students are going to be able to deal with that just fine. It might be a little tough for some of the professors, especially the older boomers. But I think with social media, people are pretty savvy to two-factor authentication by now. And spend more time educating faculty and students on general cybersecurity. The cost of prevention is going to be a lot less than the cost of repair.